Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the LT Foods Q3 FI24 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Meet Jain from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to LT Foods CQFI24 Post Results Earning Call hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. On the call today, we have the management team being represented by Mr. Ashwini Kumar Arora, MD and CEO, Mr. Sachin Gupta, CFO, Ms. Monica Jagya, VP Financial Strategy, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. We will begin the call with key thoughts from the management team. Thereafter, we will open the floor for Q&A session. I would now like to request the management to share their perspective on the performance of the company. Thank you, and over to you, Ms. Monica. Thank you, Meet. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our quarter three and nine months financial year 24 earnings conference call. Before we start with question answer session, I would like to highlight that certain statements made or discussed on the conference call today are forward looking. And a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. Results documents, including the presentation, all are available on the company's website, uh, website and have also been uploaded on the stock exchange. And I'm sure all of you have read the same. A transcript of this call will also be made available on the investor section of the company's website. Uh, as we have uploaded all the documents, now we will open the floor for question and answer, please. Sure, thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers and improvement in margins. So uh, I think first question would be, I think it would be on everyone's mind right now. Uh, can, can you throw some light on the supply chain resiliency that we have, not just from India, but also from Thailand, you know, where we source our jasmine rice from? And, uh, uh, you know, with respect to jasmine rice, do we use the Pacific route or do we use the Swiss Canal only for exports to uh, U.S.? So can you just throw some light on the supply chain situation? Thank you. Yeah. Uh... Good evening, Sheikh. Uh, you know, this Red Sea issue is uh, only uh, one is supply from India and not from the, you know, uh, and that is only to the east coast of USA and Europe. That's the area where, you know, and, and somehow to some part of the Saudi Arabia, which is Jeddah, where this interruption has ha happened. And the impact of this is, uh, it is not impacted to the west coast of USA or, you know, uh, supplies from Bangkok. So there is no, uh, you know, issue on that. Uh, regarding the impact of this is, uh, two impact has happened. One is that the freight rate uh, to the east coast uh, and Europe has gone up. So the shipping line has imposed uh, emergency surcharge uh, on that. And the other impact is uh, the transit time has increased uh, by 15 days. So that's the two impact has uh, happened uh, with this disruption due to this, you know, uh, Red Sea issue. 
Okay, so sir, a follow up on that. Uh, so I think in last two three years, this is the second time that we are facing a fleet cost situation. So at the peak of container shortages during COVID, uh, when the freight cost has had gone up six seven times. Uh, are you seeing the cost moving up at to that level, or is it still very, you know, manageable at this point? No, not to the that level. You know, at that time, the container rate has gone to, for example, USA ten thousand dollars. So the shipping line has, you know, surcharges like fourteen hundred dollars per container uh, they have imposed. So it's a manageable. So uh, there will not be any loss of sale because of disruption. Disruption. So the only impact is cost, and uh, we are evaluating uh, on you know pricing uh, how to pass on this uh, impact. So, so uh, the most critical and important is that you know um, we should not have a loss of sale. So that is not there. Oh, so that good to hear because we thought that maybe you know the customers on the other side might think, okay, let's delay the sales a little bit and uh, see where uh, the situation leads us. Uh, 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 you know, we are a we are a uh, you know FMCG consumer company, so it's not a kind of buyer seller where you know the delay can happen. So if if you are not on the shelf, it's a loss of sale and. Uh, um, we understand this, so we are making sure that you know, as far as uh, supply to consumer is, uh, uh, you know, uh, very stable, consistent. Great to hear, sir. One last question before I get to the queue. Uh, for instance, we are not having any loss of sale, but at the same time, freight cost has not really moved up to a level, you know, where we had seen in during COVID times. So we might see some minor level of margin impact, but it should not be as severe as you know margins going down to 10%. No, no, no. You are right, Abhishek. You are right. Very minor impact. So very, very minor. minor. Very minor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Doshi from Care PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, on the front uh, of, you know, there is an announcement in December that uh, where we won that case, long pending uh, case of that fire incident, and the court has granted in our favor, and there is a uh, amount of some interest also which has been granted. So, you know, post that announcement, is there any development whether, you know, have, when are we expected to receive that amount, or uh, just to understand uh, whether the insurance company can go further to the I mean, higher courts or anything of that sort, if you can just throw some light on that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, you know, so we have won the, you know, in the first court, and uh, the opposite party has the uh, option to go to the higher court. So, it's a 60 days. So let's see, you know, how they react, uh, uh, and uh, we will come to know in the coming days that they will they appeal in the next court or not. But they have the uh, option and right to go to, to the next court. Okay. And in the meantime, do we receive any sort of amounts on, you know, kind of uh, in the interim? No, no. So uh, unless and until uh, they, they exhaust with the option. Uh, so, so we have not received any amount, so I can't comment further on that, you know. Okay, okay. And the interest amount itself would come quite big, right? If I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it'd be in the range of sixty, I think eight seventy, eighty crore plus, right? It's more than that, right? Yeah, it's more than that, you know. Yeah, so we, uh, I think, if you we did do the calculation, it is more than two hundred fifty something. Yeah, totally. Oh, acha, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, got it, got it, fine. Um, uh, in terms of uh, sir, uh, the exports which has been banned for non basmati uh, do you f see a, a, so there are two parts to it, A, you know, in terms of price impact to the basmati, which I understand last time you had said no, uh, but even post that, is there any change? 
and B, in terms of uh, what we read in the articles, etc., now the gap between the prices is slightly reducing. So, are you witnessing any shift in the demand from probably non-Basmati to Basmati you know, owing to its non-availability as well as the price rise? So, if you can answer on both fronts. So, uh, you know, uh, the category is moving to, you know, from non-Basmati to Basmati. But that's a routine, you know, if we have seen historically, uh, the Basmati consumption has grown uh, in, a, in a volume term 6 to 7 percent. And as per Euro Monitor also, this is the only premium grain where the consumption is growing. If you say the total consumption globally is a, around 500 million ton and Basmati is just, a, you know, around 10 million ton consumption. So we, we expect, uh, you know, this category to grow, but uh, answering to your question, you know, is pricing uh, makes difference like, you know, if non-Basmati goes either than the Basmati consumption goes. So that is, uh, we have not seen that. We have seen that, you know, uh, there is a big difference in non-Basmati prices and Basmati. So normally people, as income grows, they wanted to, you know, have a better food, so they are moving to Basmati, uh, you know, India and uh, across the globe, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And sir, uh, in terms of uh, this ready to, yeah, ready to eat uh, category, so uh, have we expanded anything, are we, because I think we were almost on the full capacity last time we discussed, so, so anything on that, whether it is kappa rice or whether it is snacks or whether it is any uh, ready to eat category so anything on that we have seen in the presentation uh, you know of our, this uh, ready to eat and ready to cook business is growing in uh, 23% and uh, we, we are optimistic about that uh, we have uh, uh, four product at the moment uh, which is one is you know uh, heat and eat which is in USA uh, then in India we have uh, and actually globally ready to, you know, uh, cook, you know, this biryani kit and kappa rice and uh, in, especially in biryani kit, uh, we are getting a good response and uh, in the rice snacks also, uh, we have, uh, you know, changed our communication strategy a little bit and that, and we have changed some, you know, uh, the, the product portfolio also and we are getting the good response in the rice snacks also. So all the four things are uh, uh, reasonably, you know, doing well. Yeah. And we expect that, you know, it will but grow. My question was more on the capacity and any capex uh, in terms of increase. Capacity, you know, we have already increased the RTH capacity and next year is not in the agenda. Oh, already, so we have already expanded and we, we are far ahead, I mean, low from the optimum capacity. G G. Okay, okay. And uh, last question, sir, on the dividend front, uh, I mean, so it's good that last, uh, you know, you expanded your uh, dividend policy from uh, standalone profits to consolidated profits. But since last uh, couple of years, we have been receiving on an interim front. So in this, uh, till this date, uh, we have not announced any interim dividends. So again, is there any change in thought process in terms no, of... There is uh, there is no there is no change in the thought process. Whatever, you know, we have said, you know, on the consolidated, uh, we will distribute 10 to 20% of the uh, net income. Okay. No, so not announced in the interim, so that is the... Uh, so I think that's a, uh, some statute, uh, you know, they wanted to do in a, you know, final so debate. That will, be, uh, that will be done in the final one. Yeah. yeah. We will be doing in the final Okay, yes. so no interim, only the final. Uh, yes, yeah. So whatever the guidance was given. Two dividend in a year, one will be interim and one will be final. Okay. Interim so already we have thing. given last quarter, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll join in the queue. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Amit Jaswani from Stalin Assets. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir, I've got two questions. First, questions on... Uh, 
uh, our guidance of 20% ROE for FY24, first of all, uh, for FY25, sorry. Uh, so are we on track uh, for that? Because we'll have to do about 730 crores back next year to achieve that. That is a back of the envelope uh, calculation, of course. So the return on equity has already moved up, you know. So it is 18.7 and the return on equity is yeah. 20. Uh, 20 Point three. So we are already moving to that goal. So whatever, you know, uh, I think uh, we have uh, set up a goal for 20% return on equity. So we are not far from there. Right, right, right. Uh, some other questions about uh, since we are generating a lot of cash flows and lately so there has been deal about capital foods got acquired at the 5,500 crores. Organic India got acquired at 2,000 crores. Uh, our market cap, after 70 years of being in existence, uh, having put four as our auditors, uh, now being market leaders in rice, is nowhere close to. Like, I, I still don't, I'm like, when the stock price was 110, 20, I used to ask you that why are you not doing buybacks? And uh, that same question I asked at 200 also. And now you have proof of concept also that what uh, hard up market values these consumer facing food companies. Uh, have you given a thought uh, that would increase the ROEs, of course? And have you given a thought of what if we do a 500 crore kind of buyback and reduce equity by 7-8%? Uh, because I'm sure the market will start rewarding the stock in a very different way once that happens. No, no, you're, you're right, you know. Uh, so we, we keep on evaluating this. Uh, you know, the first goal was to reduce our, uh, you know, this working capital borrowing. And uh, you know now we are consistently, uh, considerably, you know, um, you know, lower our borrowing, which is now. So maybe you know next year uh, we will we will look into this. We are in a comfortable position uh, as far as our debt to beta. So we we will evaluate. We keep on evaluating all these things. Because sir, our total interest cost right now, our total interest uh, cost is about 19 crores a quarter, right? And our PAT is 150 crores. Uh, so it will be more uh, efficient if we could go for uh, buybacks than reducing dividends in my humble opinion. Of course, uh, if the valuations stay, which they do. Uh, my sir, second question is on the Red Sea problem. Sir, if you can quantify what kind of impact are we seeing, would it be right to say that we are losing about 3 crores a quarter or 6 crores a quarter? So the, the the impact is <laughs> roughly around this, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, we are evaluating uh, uh, to you know to pricing strategy how to compensate or you know. So we are still evaluating: is it a short term? Is it a long term? So maybe you know, in the next month we will. Uh, you know, decide our pricing strategy, but the impact is, as you said, is roughly uh, uh, roughly four crore rupees per month. Four crores a month. So, sir, if you increase prices by half a percent, also shouldn't that be more than easy to uh, get it done? Why why so much time in increasing prices by half percent? No, no, we, you know, as you know, we are a you know uh, FMCG consumer facing business. So it it is not a kind of commodity. You know, tomorrow you increase, and next day you decrease. You know, it doesn't happen. So we are evaluating that. Uh, we are talking to shipping lines. You know, how long it will go? If it is a two three month phenomenon, then the maybe you know the strategy will be different. If it is a something long run, then the strategy will be different. So you know, this has just happened. Uh, uh, you know. In this month only, in January 1st, you know, we have seen, starting seeing the impact. Uh, uh, we are waiting for a month, how it, you know, evolves. Right. Right. Sir. And this is your uh, question, you know, we have seen historically, uh, you know, uh, if, if the cost has increased, uh, we are able to pass on to the consumer and uh, without, without having a impact on the growth of the business. Exactly my point, sir. That is very easy. So, a fair call, sir. So, PBT impact, which is a 204 crore PBT, uh, there's a possibility that if we don't pass on prices, we'll have a 12 crore kind of impact as of uh, today. Right, sir? Yeah, 
So, so it will not be in this quarter because we always had a uh, inventory in hand uh, in our you know the destination. So the the impact will start uh, from the next uh, you know uh, next year. First quarter. Then I'm sure by then you can increase prices all sorts. So ah. we'll, we'll look into that. Yeah. Got it, sir. Uh, got it, sir. So uh, we are clear on buyback. Uh, we are clear on uh, sir. And the growth uh, should be what kind of growth do we expect for Q4? So on a full year basis, uh, uh, we are expecting uh, double digit, which is uh, you know roughly uh, nine to ten percent growth on full year basis. And that's by volume or value, sir? Combined, you're saying value, value. So you've ever thought of divesting some stake in uh, giving some stake to these private equity companies for our organic business, sir, like the healthy business, because that is where the high growth is there and because that will unlock some valuation potential. I'm not speaking about the India Dawat business. I'm speaking only about the organic uh, business because that is a business which will grow at very fast rate and the kind of valuations where we trade versus where the markets are valuing it is a very large difference, sir. And I keep thinking and keep asking the team that why does Davat get such a low valuation uh, given uh, the and kind I, of business uh, that and you have? I agree to. with you. That I agree with you. Uh, but on the uh, organic company, so the the answer is that you know we are not evaluating. There is already uh, in that company uh, Rabo Equity has invested in that uh, roughly three four years back. At the moment, we are we don't need any uh, kind of uh, you know money, so we are not uh, evaluating any uh, investment, private equity investment in the company already. We are sitting. Well, we should get about 250 crores from the insurance. Uh, when should we? Uh, if they don't go to the higher court, if the insurance company doesn't go to the higher court, we should receive the insurance money by when? Because that will straight uh, decrease our debt. They have a 60 days from the order. So, sir, that is, uh, we've finished about 45 days, if I'm right? No, no, I think uh, we have just finished uh, in, uh, I think, uh, 20 days because, you know, there is a technical clause, you know, from the certified copy, true copy. So, the day starts 60 days from there. Got it. Got it. So, if that uh, 250 crore comes in, we don't have to pay any taxes on that. That straight goes to uh, decrease our debt and our interest cost goes down by 20 crore, right? So tax, you know, for, uh, 250 crore, then in our books, you know, the outstanding is 136 crore. So the rest of the amount, we have to pay the tax. Got it, got it. But uh, substantial amount, you know, that will uh, further uh, reduce the whatever the borrowing is. Got it, got it, got yes. it, sir. Done, sir. Thank you, thank you. My best wishes, sir, Raji. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from Vipul Kumar Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations, sir, for a very good set of numbers. So, sir, in earlier presentations, we used to share the uh, tonnage for, from each region, tonnage and sales. So, is it possible to share the uh, ton, tonnage and value from each region, sir? Volume data. So, it is not in the presentation you said? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, you can... You can uh, you can email to us. Uh, we will definitely share with you. Not an issue. And sir, uh, regarding buyback, is there any uh, threshold in your mind for the debt? Uh, once it falls below that particular level, then only you will consider buyback means 1,000 crores or 800 crores. So do you have any uh, debt level in the mind? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, so, uh, you know, we we want that, you know, unless uh, I, I think uh, debt beta 1 is a good good number for us. Uh, 
to you know but we are evaluating some some growth opportunities so the short answer is uh, you know we don't want to increase our borrowing to debt a bit a one and you know uh, after that whatever the surplus amount either you know it will get into buyback or dividend you know that depends on the uh, we uh, or at that time we will evaluate and so lastly our organic business is not doing well uh, uh since last uh, two quarter two three quarters if i remember correctly so what are the steps we are going to take to uh, ma- uh, make it grow again so actually you know for the last two quarter uh, you know although you are seeing the b growth against last quarter uh, you know year but our organic business is doing very well you know we have uh, got a you know that uh, deficit of 200 crore uh, from this soya anti dumping uh, duty but uh, we have filled it up with other product so that's more stable so uh, what we say that you know our organic business is has become very robust and uh, from the next uh, financial year you will start seeing the growth in the business uh, so actually you know soya was big business uh, commoditized in nature so yeah the blessing in i will say disguise that you now we have a more robust business by so this product line has replaced soya sir so so, uh, so we have uh, rice we have uh, you know this uh, oil seed uh, lentils so these are the line of product you know which has been uh, grown for the strength in the business so next year we will see year over year growth right sir yes yes okay sir thank you and all the best for the future thank you sir thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of ranodeep rash from mas capital please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity sir and congratulations on a great set of numbers uh so my question was with respect to the uh, how has it so it's been a while since we've had the salik deal right and uh, nt food if i'm not wrong used to do around 20000 ton uh whereas the saudi arabia market is around 1 million ton uh, if i'm not wrong we were gaining for around 10% market share which is around 1 lakh ton so wanted to understand how have we progressed uh, in our aspirations in the saudi arabia market so uh, i don't know from this 7000 or 10% that's the 10% is our growth aspiration that's uh, you know true and uh, uh, you know these are as i always said in all the calls you know it's a it's not a short term thing it's a medium to long term and uh, uh, we are moving towards you know um, that we will we will uh, so on see the you know good initiative in that market by the way you know the middle east market for us uh, has grown by 44% uh, uh, you know uh, uh, till in 9 months so uh, we have uh, you know quite uh, active in uh, uh, middle east market overall and uh, we are getting good response we are investing in uh, behind the consumer so that's uh, been being rewarded and uh, that's where you know our 40% growth is coming <laughs> great great to hear that sir yeah. uh, so my next question was uh, with respect to so overall we have three revenue streams so uh, like specialty basmati rice organic and uh, processed packaged foods right where uh, if i'm not wrong dawat and royal being around 70% uh, of the business uh so what is our school of thought in terms of developing mega brands right uh, within the brand right so so dawat and royal are strong brands so is there a school of thought of developing bigger brands in the organic and processed uh, processed packaged foods uh just to draw a parallel like uh, like how itc started couple of uh, years ago right now they have six mega brands of each 1000 crore plus right which is driving the growth Uh, so what are our school of thought in this aspect 
so as far as you know this uh, you know ready to eat and ready to cook uh, we are extending our brand equity which is dawat and royal and that's the uh, you know one strategy to to grow our business in that segment on the uh, organic uh, you know as organic company is the business is more to b2b and we wanted to focus on b2b but uh, having said that you know we are uh, you know extending our organic portfolio in the royal brand and uh, we will start soon in the you know dawat but as a nature bio food company they will keep focusing on you know quality b2b business okay okay fair point and if i can just squeeze in one last question sir uh, so so india business happens to be in around 30% of the total business but i understand it's growing at 20% as against 20% of the overall company uh, in the long term how do you see the uh, the contribution of india versus rest of the world uh, shaping out sir so slowly you know india india contribution will grow up as you know uh, india market is growing faster than the you know gl- uh, global consumption so in the long run medium to long run we see india's contribution will improve to the you know as, so this i'm talking about in the basmati uh, yes. segment it will grow uh, we never know that you know if we do some inorganic growth so in overall it may change accordingly but to the specialty rice uh, we see you know the the overall india contribution changes to the to the highest idea uh, when you say highest idea can you quantify that like like around what kind of numbers so you know right now it's a 30% so we for example we are expecting Uh, the international growth so you know around 8 to 10% whereas you know india 15% so proportionately it will improve so i have not done the math but uh, yeah okay sure sure fair enough sir uh, thank you and uh, all the best for the upcoming quarter yeah thank you thank you before we take the next question a reminder to participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue to ask questions please press star and 1 we take the next question from the line of vincent andrews from gog financial services limited please go ahead hi sir good evening uh, am i audible yes 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 uh, sir uh, thanks for the opportunity and um, congratulations for the good uh, consistent good set of numbers and uh, i have couple of questions uh the first one is related to golden star so you in the last convo you had mentioned about uh, uh, 50% for the stake in the uh, company in june 2025 you mentioned am i right yes yes okay so um, see in the current uh, accounting method is to um, our sales uh, does not include this uh, um, golden star uh, revenue right ji ji Yes, 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 so right. revenue, yes revenue revenue is not uh, included only the profit is this only yeah. profit is added okay so yes. can you please share uh, so in order to uh, complete my model so can you please share the nine month revenue as well as uh, the profit for this so nine month revenue is 58 million okay and profit is 9 million uh, is 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 all dollar you know it's all dollar okay right yeah. so uh, so how much you expect in fi 24 or rough sorry in fi 24 uh, how much you expect yes. this is a three uh, you know quarter so you you can calculate you know yeah and so thank you and uh, the second one the second question is uh, in the uh, bod has approved 500 crore uh, fundraising so the purpose for that i i could not get that question what do you said 500 crore 
ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఫ్లోర్ ఫండ్ రైసింగ్ త్రూ కమర్షియల్ పేపర్ బిఓడి హ్యాస్ అప్రూవ్డ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫిఫ్టీ క్రోర్స్ Okay. Uh, it is an alternative source of funding which we aspire to raise in the coming future. So our overall borrowings won't go up. It is just an alternative source of funding which we uh, think to achieve in the coming quarter. Okay. okay. So, okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. And, um, oh, sir, I will uh, come back in the queue. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Well, that was the last question in queue. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Uh, thank you so much for joining and uh, look forward to see you in the you know, next conference. What? Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Moti Lalo Swal Financial Services Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.